Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Flames. On today's episode, we are going to talk all about how perseverance, hard work, and some retooling can get you the Stanley Cup and exactly what can the Flames learn from the Colorado Avalanche and their journey to winning the Stanley Cup. Your Locked on Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Locked On Flames. Whether this is your first episode or you listen every day or whenever you have the time, I appreciate you. As always, my name is Jess Belmosto, and I'm so happy to have you here. The Avs halted the Lightning from striking three times, and they had a really big win in Game 6, and there are plenty of things that the Flames can learn and why we shouldn't be upset and super defeated over being eliminated in the second round in their first truly competitive season as a roster. Uh, in, In my honest opinion, I don't think the Flames are that far behind the Avalanche. I don't. But let's get some housekeeping out of the way first, especially for the YouTube viewers, because I know you love to pick on me when I wear my Boston shirts. Okay, I'm wearing this, and I uh, just, I don't have many Flames shirts right now. I'm not convinced, like, I'm waiting to get another jersey until uh, when these new, like, reverse retros come out, and I am not buying anything until Johnny is re-signed. So, (laughs) it'll be a bit, but... Don't roast me for this, okay? Let's just jump back into this, though. Patience is a virtue, okay? The Avs, it took them quite a bit of time to get where they are now. And I'm going to pull up the record here of when they were, like, just how much they struggled, okay? So let's do this. Uh, Let's do... Okay, so right now, if you're looking at the screen, you can probably see it, but I have this graphic here of the last, oh, what is this? One, two, three, four, six seasons of the Colorado Avalanche, and it's the records of the team. So this record in 2016-2017 season, they were 22 and 56, okay? Okay. You don't make the playoffs with those numbers. The following year, they almost doubled their wins with 43 and basically cut their losses in half with 30. 2018, 2019, this was the year that the Flames were eliminated by the Avs in five games, right? So they went 38 and 30. Really? Well, like, these are just the wins and losses. I obviously don't have the overtime points up here, but... um. You know, you just, you're basically playing 500 ball or hockey, I guess you should say, I should say. Um, And again, that's like a turning point for them because they are playing in the second round and whatnot. And then, of course, there's the pause when they went 42 and 20 and then with 70 games played. And last season, they went 39 and 13, just regulation wins and losses in a shortened season. Okay? Like, are you starting to see where things are, like, the pattern here? Like, they're really getting better, you know? (laughs) Really getting better. (laughs) And then they had 56 regulation wins and 19 regulation losses. So, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect here, but they had rough seasons. And of course, you're not going to magically have this Stanley Cup championship team like immediately. Like that doesn't happen. That's not how this works. Every single team that has gone on to win the cup usually faces a timeline of really not so great performances in the regular season, some questionable postseason performances, and then they win the cup. 
the Avs this year truly, like, they were a really good team this year. And that's because of all the losing they've done in the past. You have to lose before you can win. And look at the Flames, okay? Look at their regular, their shortened regular season last year and how awful it was, how abysmal it was. And you had a coach who couldn't coach some of the best players in the league. Two of the three top U.S. born players were, are on your team and you can't coach them. But magically, Daryl Sutter comes in and they both score 40 goals and have 100 point seasons. Again, coaching problems here. Like, you, you learn to pinpoint the problems. Is, it's almost as if many of us had seen that before. But losing, bef- learning to lose before you can win does not just mean the regular season. Because in the regular season, you know, you're losing night after night. And you're not, like, there's no real expectation. Like, you know you're not going to make the playoffs. You know that, you know, you're really only playing for a draft pick at this point, and you're just waiting for all this to be over so you can go on vacation. Kind of like me when I'm working these next few weeks, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to be on a lake. But no, in like all seriousness, you know you're not playing for something. But when you're, you're in the playoffs, and you've earned your spot there, you're fighting for something. You're winning like you're looking to win (laughs) the trophy you don't get a trophy for well I guess you do but also like for winning in the regular season but usually like there's the president's trophy curse you know but there's no trophy like it's just a regular season award as Daryl Sutter would say you know when you're fighting in the playoffs you're fighting for a spot and the Stanley Cup and I think That's why the Flames this year were such a delight to watch. Because, number one, they were playing really great hockey. Number two, they were fighting for a playoff spot. Number three, once they got to the playoffs, we all thought it was going to be a deeper run. We all thought it was going to be the conference finals. But they ended up losing. And that's okay. Because you don't just get handed these things because you have a great regular season and... You know, you have stars on your team that can perform. Look at Florida. Look at the Florida Panthers. Look at the Toronto Maple Leafs. Look at the Carolina Hurricanes, even. Like, some of the best rosters in this team are not winning and making it to these rounds because other teams are just playing better better than them. And, again, learning to lose is part of the journey. And that's that. And coming up next, we are also going to talk about losing and gaining in terms of retooling and adding meaningful depth to your roster. But first, we're going to talk about Bet Online. As always, when it comes to Bet Online or any sort of gambling, please remember to gamble responsibly. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, news, including Major League Baseball. You know, the trade deadline's coming up. I can only imagine what's going to there with the chaos and who are some players that might find themselves a new home before the second half of the season. Bet Online remains your best spot for all of your sports scores and podcasts, news, uh, for the season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest ways to check in on your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device, your LeapFrog, your iPad, whatever kids are using these, not kids, whatever adults are using these days to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts Thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked On Flames. As always, make sure that you're subscribed to the show wherever you enjoy listening, whether that be YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Audible, Stitcher, you name it, because we are there. And I think one of of the coolest parts is just getting to hang out with y'all every day. It's a pleasure. You know, even though I'm only talking to my camera, I know that there are people that listen to the show. 
and whether they listen to it on their drive to work, drive to school, drive to camp, while they're cooking, I appreciate you. So, uh, yeah, let me know where you're tuning in from, because I think that's really fun. <laughs> I love to know what you're doing, like, when you're listening to this show and listening to me ramble. One of the weaker spots for Calgary has been depth. And, you know, I think they figured out the middle six. I like the middle six a lot. But the fourth line, the fourth line is something that is very confusing to me, especially this season, this season specifically, because, you know, they went out and signed Trevor Lewis and Brad Richardson, who are uh, former LA Kings. They're players that, uh, I almost said Lucic coached, <laughs> that Lucic and to fully have won with, but have also been under Daryl Sutter's coaching system before. And I'm sorry, but those two guys are not at a point in their career anymore where they're going to make a difference. A good difference, I should say, because they sure did make a difference out on the ice. Am I right? But, you know, guys like Brett Ritchie too. And I know I harp and like dog Brett Ritchie pretty hard on this show, but at least he adds someone who can like throw his body around and I would rather him do that than say, you know, Matthew Kachuk and like break his hand. But there's there you get something out of a big body. And I just don't think the entire roster needs to be, or I guess, you know, your bottom line, your bottom four, your fourth line rather, <laughs> needs to be these guys who only contribute in that way. I think. You know, it's obviously like you don't they don't need to be super, super, super productive, but you still need to be able to put them out there knowing you'll get something out of them. They ended up waving Brad Richardson, who ended up in Vancouver, and they kept Trevor Lewis, which made about negative two percent sense. And I really am disappointed in his postseason performance. And I I don't know. And I think the biggest thing that the Flames need to take away from Colorado because, you know, the NHL is a copycat league. You take pieces from each, like, successful team over the years and you look to build a roster that can compete and win. The biggest piece that the Flames need to take away is truly the depth. The Colorado at one point had, um, you know, a lot of injuries and illnesses going around and their their depth they were so deep that it didn't make a difference they were still winning they were still producing it wasn't like they were necessarily just getting by the skin of their teeth <laughs> they were still a competitive team and it didn't matter that their roster was basically depleted sometimes it's worth putting in a call or a fax whatever they do a claim when the waiver wire happens and all that stuff because you know the uh the abs ended up picking nak up out of philly and you know obviously he's not like a top minutes kind of guy but he still eats the minutes he's still able to play and compete and you know he brings something to your roster and it's important that you have that and it's an additional body that can still do something <laughs> One line cannot carry you through the postseason. It just, it can't. Yes, of course. You know, obviously your top line guys, you you look to them to do a majority of the scoring, but there's nothing wrong with like your secondary scoring, uh, you know, coming through and ensuring that your lead is held and things like that. Because I expected more out of Tyler Toffoli in the postseason. I expected more out of Andrew Mangiapane. I certainly expected more out of, you know, I can't really say much for Milan Lucic because, you know, he is an older player now. But I I do think that there are players on this team that needed to step up more. And it's important for this roster to know that their window is wide open and to start playing like it. And 
I'm hoping with you know the off the off season re signings and hopefully some action during free agency, this team learns like, okay, we can add more. And it's, it doesn't need to be these old players from a former organization where I used to coach or where I used to work and all these connections and whatnot. It's just very important for the Flames, like for Brad Tree Living to understand that you're not going to win with a bottom line that has earned the nickname of the waiver wire the waiver wire line because of how incompetent they are. And, you know, whether it be bringing up a guy or two from Stockton to let them get a taste of the NHL and see what they can do or going out and signing a true depth player this season, this free agency, you, or even trading for one. And I think it's important. I do because you know, you can obviously get enough out of your two-way defensemen or your two-way forwards, rather, but what are what are you doing if you're just signing a bunch of defen- uh, forwards who just who don't produce? <laughs> it's very frustrating, and I don't think that we need to, to do this whole veteran presence uh, nonsense anymore. I think the Flames have learned they have an identity, and it's time to compete. Coming up next, we are going to wrap up the show with what the Flames can truly take away from this and why fans and players alike should not be disappointed in this postseason performance. Thank you all so much for tuning into Locked on Flames. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. Watching the players skate around with the cup and do their little interviews and Winning, like immediately after winning, and then when the emotions are just raw and you know you're getting the full truth from them, uh, I think that's one of the, like the most special moments because you're truly getting just what what the players are thinking, and uh, you hear about players who have had posters of the Stanley Cup on their wall since they were a kid. Or you hear about players who are playing for a family member because they're sick. Or, uh, you know, Nazem Kadri playing and winning. And he's the first Muslim in NHL history to win the Stanley Cup. And that that's huge. Like, everyone has their reason and, like, their identity and their purpose in moving on and winning, you know. And... <laughs> I forget who it was, but they they were asked, like, uh, what can other teams do to replicate your success? And they were like, well, just draft Kale McCars. I, I don't think that many teams have players uh, up to the caliber as Kale McCarr or even remotely close, like in the same, uh, what's the word, atmosphere, stratosphere? I don't know. But, you know, like Adam Fox, Charlie McAvoy. Um, that's really all I can think of off the top of my head, honestly, but I, I really think that, you know, it's guys who, who have been with the team for years and years and years, and whether it be their whole career or they get drafted by another team and they end up signing elsewhere, or they get traded in the middle of their career, but it's, it's those players who have been through the ups and downs and, truly know what it takes to win and their rewards and this giant payout at the end. And it's, it's not the end. Like this is like their true taste of success here. And it it is what they've all play for and what they want. But I hope someday we get to see, you know, Gaudreau, Hannafin, uh, Mangiapani, like uh, lift the cup and say the same thing. And I hope it's not, somewhere down the line, like, like in Landis Gog's career where it's been like 10 years or Eric Johnson, where it's been like 10 or 11 years, you know, like I want it to be sooner than that. But I also know that like, again, this stuff can't be built overnight. And I said, this postseason wouldn't be 
a bust if they make it out of the first round. You know, you can get eliminated in the second round. That's fine. At least you know what it what winning feels like, but you also know what losing feels like. The Flames could have done, you know, individual players could have done more, of course, but you have to look at where they are as a roster, as a team, and what they were working with. And I hope that, you know, the ups and downs that all of these players have gone through, through uh, whether it be with the Flames or a different organization, they know they know what it takes to win and how painful it is to lose. And no one can just draft this immaculate team and rebuild it overnight. The Flames did a little bit of retooling, but not too much. I really thought that a year ago we would be looking at a trade in the offseason for Gaudreau. I thought that Geo being gone would leave a much bigger hole than it did. And I just, I don't know. I think it's, it's okay to like look at this postseason and be proud of them considering the 180 that they did in a year's time. That's it's huge. They went from not being able to skate and being compared to beer league skaters to really looking competitive and it's just a matter of time before the Flames really turn that corner in their postseason performances. And I, you know, I think that they they've they're rounding, they're they're getting closer. But I, you know, if the off season goes as planned, as many of us are hoping, I would say things are looking good, and the window is still open. As always, thank you so much for tuning into Locked on Flames, and I'm so happy to have you here with me. Thank you for listening. If you want, share this podcast with someone's team who is just really not that good. So to give them a little bit of hope. That way, you know, they can see the little light at the end of the tunnel sort of deal here. And that being in the draft lottery year after year is okay. (laughs) Because you're building something, unless you're Buffalo. And, but I actually think like now they're finally, they're finally building something worthwhile. Uh, Thank you again for listening. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. You can get this podcast wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Make sure to like, rate, subscribe, follow, whatever your preference is. (laughs) And I will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.